this question. How do I stop being possessed by spirits and demons? And so we've got uh, about six, seven minutes left. Let me give a basic outline, a basic outline for how to stop being possessed. Um, I think I have a version of this online. I'll take a look at my notes here. Um, but, but this is, I'll probably make a version of this and put, make a video of it or something. So here is a very basic outline to stop being possessed by demons um, and not spirits because essentially they're the same thing. So first, point number one, understand that you are human and humans have both a physical and a spiritual nature. Point number two, understand that all humans are born in sin which has corrupted us, and that has caused spiritual deadness. Number three, this spiritual deadness not only separates us from God, and it leaves us depraved, but it leaves the remaining physical part of us in control by natural lusts and an inclination to go and commit more sin. Number four, Understand that sin is, one, missing the mark of God's perfection, but it's not only that. It's also, two, any form of disobedience to God, and three, any transgression of God's moral law. That's, that's sin. Those are kind of the three aspects of sin. Uh, number five, sin is responsible Sin is your main enemy. I talk about this in the Empower Christian Roadmap. Before Satan is our enemy, sin is our primary enemy. Because without sin, you don't even have Satan. Without sin, you don't have us giving way to Satan. Sin is the main enemy. It's why, some, it's why Satan and some of the angels fell from heaven. It's why humans fell from the way that God created us and how he initially had a relationship with us. It's why demons are now being punished um, by being trapped and bound in the spiritual realm on earth, what's called the abyss. It's why they're there because they sinned. It's why they want to be in us because they're being punished and the way that they can temporarily escape this place of torment is to be in us. And it also allows them to continue to sin in a tangible way and to influence us to continue to rebel and sin against God as well. So the demons can come into us this, and they can get us to sin or influence us to sin. And then they get to sin vicariously through us, right? If they want to murder, they don't, they don't have ability to kill they can try to kill us on the inside, or they can get us to try to kill, um, and they can get us to do this, which has us sinning against God as well, and in the same position as them. Number six, because you were born in sin, and your parents and your ancestors were sinners, and because you have sinned, your natural inclination is to sin. You enjoy sin, and so you unfortunately deserve God's wrath. Demons, therefore, have a legal right to harass you. That's, we can't go, I, I don't deserve to have demons. In, in a sense, I mean, it's not fair, it's not good, but it is just. If we are sinners, then demons have a legal right to say, they're a sinner, I'm a sinner, Hey, we're in this together. We're both sinners. We're both doing the same kind of evil against God. We both don't we both want to live our way. We don't want to do what God wants us to do. We don't have a right to say, God, protect us from these demons when we are living and doing the same things that the demons have done. Right? Because these are the very things that give them the open door to our lives in the first place. Number seven, you must be sinless and blameless. The only way to have this is to put all of your trust in Jesus, the Son of God, who paid the penalty of all of your sins on the cross. You must believe in him, have faith in what he did, trust in him, and give your life wholly to him as your Lord and your Savior. You cannot earn this, 
you must receive it as a gift from God that you don't deserve. It's not available to you because you're good. It's available because God is good and because he's gracious and loving and he sent Jesus for us. Eight, when you fully decide to trust in Jesus and give him the rest of your life, your dead spiritual nature is reborn of the Holy Spirit of God. Christians call this being born again. Your spirit is made alive and you are permanently owned by God, adopted by God, sealed by God, protected by God, and there's not a single thing that Satan can do about it. Number nine, you must renounce all sin, past, present, and future, and consecrate or to dedicate and make holy your life to Jesus. Take every sin and put it under the blood of Jesus and receive forgiveness from God for it. Everything, both the big stuff and the little stuff. Number 10, forgive everyone who has harmed you just as your Father in heaven has forgiven you. Draw near to your Father in heaven and let him be your strong tower. Make it right with everyone that you've harmed and ask for their forgiveness. Immediately remove things in your life that you know do not honor God. You cannot hang on to your unforgiveness and your bitterness and be set free. If you let these things go, then God will release you of the consequences of those things. Keeping hatred and bitterness in your heart is the same thing as having the sin of murder in your heart that you're just not acting out on. It's still sin. You got to let it go. Not just the outward sin, the inward sin too. Number 11, ask the Holy Spirit to heal you in the name of Jesus of every broken and hurting part of your soul. As he reminds you of your painful memories and experiences and issues, and he takes you deeper and deeper, don't fight it. Allow him to transform you into the image of Jesus. Number 12, ask the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus to revive and restore and make every dead and make new, make it brand new, every dead thing in your mind, your heart, and your soul, and to empower you with supernatural power and strength and spiritual gifts from God. Number 13, ask the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus to cleanse you of every impurity, to break every curse, to break every legal right, to tear down every stronghold, to cancel every demonic power, to renounce every wicked and sinful deed, and to purify every thought and motive of your heart, and to evict every demon. Number 14, take authority in Jesus' name and command every unclean spirit to leave your body, your mind, and all your soul and life in the name and authority of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will often bring to your mind things that you need to deal with still. As the Holy Spirit gives you a name or a sin or an emotion, and you know it doesn't come from God because you're studying God's word and you know who God is and you know what he cares about, as the Holy Spirit brings you these things to remind you that they're there, renounce its right to be there. And you can do this once you belong to God because it is now an illegal trespasser on God's property, on God's temple and command it to leave right now in Jesus' name. And if it puts up a fight, draw near to God and fight back and keep pushing until you feel it leave. Number 15, ask the Holy Spirit to come in to every vacant place that a demon has left. Ask him to overflow in you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet in every area of your mind, your will, your emotions, and every part of your life. Give God your entire being. Give him the entire temple, not just the Holy of Holies room, not just the inner holy room, but the entire sanctuary, the entire courtyard. Give him the whole thing. He wants the whole thing. He's God. He deserves it. Allow no place for demons to retreat to in your soul. Leave no stone unturned. 
and no area that you have not yet put under the blood of Christ. Give everything to your heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. And last, number 16, ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life and to teach you and guide you and mold you and shape you. Jesus is with you in the person of the Holy Spirit. He will never leave you nor forsake you. God is infinitely more powerful than any and every demon. It is not even a close battle. If you trust in God and in Christ and you are dedicated and you fight, you will eventually be completely victorious. So that would be a 16-part process of getting free from every form of demonic harassment. And each one of these steps covers important things. So commit yourself to the process. Know that it is God's will for you to be holy. In Matthew 5, verse 48, Jesus said, Be perfect because your heavenly Father is perfect. That's God's will for you, to be completely sanctified. That same verse I quoted earlier, um, I'm actually going to pull it up. That was 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And it says, now may, now may the God of peace himself, so this is something that God is willing and wanting to do in you, it's his will. It's what he wants. Your father wants you to be perfect as he is perfect. It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. So this is what God is doing. He is empowering you to do it. As long as you're committed to that process, he's going to take you all the way. And yes, as the chat says, uh, sometimes we need other brothers and sisters to help us in this process. Amen. We are not meant to do it alone. That is the point of why there is the church. We are here to support one another, to encourage one another. God has not given all of us, any one of us, all of the spiritual gifts we need. We're given different gifts in order to bless and help one another. Some of us are better at discernment of demonic spirits. Others are getting prophetic words, words of knowledge. Others have the gift of healing and so forth. But it's God's will for you to get there. And he has not set it up so that you have to spend your whole life looking for the right person who has the ability to cast out demons. He's given each one of us everything that we need. It's within our access. So we have the ability to be free, and that's God's will for us. So continue to fight the good fight. Um, let God have your whole entire spirit, body, mind, and soul, and your body, and he will deliver us completely. All right, until the Empower Hour uh, next Wednesday, you guys have a blessed rest of your weekend.